what we had to put on our window. This is like pitch black. But on the inside, I feel like it looks like I'm living in a trap house <laughs> with this on the windows. Uh, because people just keep coming by and they keep looking in because it doesn't matter if you put curtains or not. Anyways, the whole point of this video today has nothing to do with my house. In fact, we're doing another interview video. I have another interview with another recruiting company. That company reached out to me a while back and I just now saw it so I responded and this is another take at a recruiter interview. Now there are a lot of opinions on <laughs> recruiters and interviews and whether it's worth your time or not and I would say a majority of recruiters probably just don't care and they'll just throw you at whatever. And then there are recruiters that do care and that will try to fit your needs. And I would say that this guy was really genuine and he would really want to place you somewhere where you fit. It is one of those places where I've talked about how you work for the recruiter first before you get hired, contract to hire, where they scrape off the top of your salary. So they're charging a company $100, you're getting $70, and that's how they make their money. Or if the company wants to buy you out early, they have to pay out 1,040 hours worth of work to the contracting company as payment to hire you full time. And so that's why companies don't tend to do that. They kind of make you wait it out. But if you show that you're good enough on day one, you know, they might just buy you out. But that's what's going on here in this recruiting interview. I try to make the recruiters be as like transparent as possible. So I asked the questions that probably he's like, why are you asking that? Just because I want to show you guys how this works. So don't get too in your head when you're doing interviews. Just be yourself. I think that's it. Shout out to all the patrons that support the channel. If you've ever considered supporting a creator online, you know, maybe consider me next time. I have some resumes and cover letters that also support the channel. They're on my website. You can go check those out if you want. We have a Discord if you want to shoot me a text or message me or shoot me an email. A lot of great people in there. If you want to see more of these, I keep making them. Subscribe, hit that like button. Let me know what you think. One note real quick, he did send me the jobs that he was talking about in this. He sent me over three jobs. They're all $90,000 plus salary or working for the recruiter is $45 an hour. Let me give you the required skills and descriptions if you guys are interested in what he matched me with. So we have a PHP, JavaScript front end, two years required, three years experience of LAMP stack testing with, okay, so this one's really not for me. I haven't been doing LAMP for three years straight. Can accommodate periodical work from home. 80% on site though. Eh, maybe I could be a LAMP stack developer. And the last one, 90,000 plus JavaScript developer on site, two years JavaScript experience. They want a computer science degree required. I don't have a computer science degree, so I don't know why he sent this to me, so it must not be required. Pretty good job results, and uh, let's get started with this. Hope you enjoy it. All right, so it is 10.28 in the morning, and I have another interview. Again, if it seems like I'm not really interested or I'm kind of arrogant, uh, I by no means intend to be arrogant or like a jerk. I just try to ask the questions that I know people want to know, but they don't ask because they're afraid of not getting the job and I'm not. So I want you guys to be able to get answers, you know, ask the questions. Don't be scared. It's okay. You're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. Just remember that. Has to be a good fit both ways. Can't do the other one. Uh, 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 I can only do the left eyebrow. The things you think about while you're waiting for an interview. I think it's better if you think about random things then you start getting too much in your head. This, this is the thing, like um, Floyd May Mayweather, for example, right? He is notorious for kind of just sitting on the couch watching the game before he has a big fight. A lot of people are like, aren't you nervous? Aren't you scared? Like, why aren't you prepping? He's like, look, I've either put in the work or I haven't. And the results will show for themselves. I'm gonna start working on my video here in a minute. If he doesn't call me. Now, 11.23, see what the dealio is. Hey, this is Josh. Hey, yeah. Hey, Josh, how's it going? It's not too bad. Everything good with the other guy? Good. Yeah, he's good now. Had to, some of the schedule to start, but we gotta make sure we have some things in place for him, so took a little bit longer than expected. Um, so I'm gonna try some flexibility. Wanted to, uh, you know, touch base with you. I've got your LinkedIn profile and your resume pulled up. 
want to get a sense for your current situation and, and what you might be looking for out of your next role to see if we have anything that aligns. So, as far as tech stack, I'm open to pretty much everything that's on my resume. And I say that because I've done a lot of different web development technologies. I'm not really language specific, so to say, uh, so to speak, but uh, more about, you know, let's use what works. So as far as like what tech stack I absolutely have to have, I'm pretty open. That's not a huge deal yeah, to me. What are you, what would you say you're the best at? Probably JavaScript and PHP. Yeah, JavaScript and PHP. Um, and how many years overall would you say you have with both of those? Three. Three years, okay. And what type of projects are you working on currently? So I'm a part-time code teacher on weekends, teach code to people, and the current position is a C sharp position. It's like a sandbox software for nonprofits. Um, it's a pretty small dev team, just a, about four people. Um, it looks like you're working on front end development. What what does the project entail? So the title is front end develop, front end developer, but uh, it's more like full stack. So the I'm doing I'm doing some jQuery, vanilla JavaScript. I'm writing C sharp back end. I'm doing SQL, I'm pulling up reports, S SSRS reports. It's, it's more than front end, I think. That was just the title that they gave me when they initially brought me on, and I said I was open okay. to learning more, and they just let me do that. Okay, as far as your role now, um, you know, looks like you've been there about a year or so. What's got you open to considering opportunities? The tech stack is antiquated. It's old version of .NET, and mainly, I just want to grow, get some more responsibility, use state-of-the-art technology. Always a good reason, wanting to stay current and kind of being on the cutting edge of things. Um, from a, a position standpoint, I'm assuming you're, you're in a full-time role right now? Yeah. Okay. And are you open to considering a contract to hire positions, or do you need to stay direct? Um, it depends on the company. I guess how that would work is I would work for you and your company for X amount of months and then get pulled onto the company? Yeah, yeah. typically the, the way most of our, our six month contract to hire models work, um, you have a correct to start with, um, you would be a W-2 employee. So we would essentially be your HR and your payroll. You would just be working at one of our clients, reporting to managers at one of our clients um, with the goal of getting you converted to a full-time employee. A lot of my clients use that six month period to, you know, from, from their standpoint, it's an advantage because they get to try before they buy. Same thing goes with you. So even if you're in a six month contract hire situation, you're not obligated to convert unless you want to. Um, another advantage for you is that while you're on contract, you get paid for every hour you work. So versus the salary, if you're, you know, filling out just say 80,000 per year, and you're putting in 50, 60 hours per week, you're getting the same paycheck every other week. Whereas when you're on contract, you put in 50, 60 hours, um, you're going to get paid for every single hour that you that you put in. Um, we do have benefits as well. So while you're on contract, you would have access to medical, dental, vision insurance, all while working you know, towards the, the pursuit of being converted. And most of our clients, they typically just use the six-month contract to hire window as a way to spread out the public fee over the course of six months. So they can bring um, you on quicker and have us take care of all the billing and all the administrative stuff until they're ready to say, okay, we've got you know, budget for this full-time role, let's go ahead and convert you. And they can do that at any point in time as well. So if you go in and just exceed expectations and they know they're gonna want you right away, they can convert you after the first day if they wanted to. Um, looks like you're close to downtown Salt Lake. So are you looking to stay in that area or what do you have flexibility on in terms of commute? Somewhere in the valley, like Draper to Salt Lake City. Okay. And from a compensation standpoint, where does have you at now and where are you looking to be at? So case really right now, about 80. And I think since I have such a history with JavaScript, I could probably go somewhere in the mid 90s, maybe 100. Gives me a good range. Um, what I want to do, let me take a look at <clears throat> some of the positions that I've got that are going to align with what you're currently doing and what your, your top skill sets are. Um, give me a little bit to get those put together and I'll send them out and we can start talking about each one and see which ones we want to move forward with. Okay. I did have one question about the 
converting from contract to hire? What's the rate sure. where they say, no, thank you? Uh, so it's based off of 1,040 hours. So they can, they can convert you at any point in time. It's really just the sliding scale um, in terms of, you know, they're, they're going to hire the closer they get to six months worth of work, the less that they're going to have to pay. And ultimately, when you knock out 1,040 hours, they can convert you at any point in time. Um, but as far as them, you know, saying this isn't the right fit, we want to get rid of, um, we want to get rid of Josh. That's really up to the manager, and they can do that at any point in time, just like they could if you were a permanent employee. Sure. I was just wondering if that happens often. I've never done contract to hire. I just know how it works. I'm just curious what the statistics are, like out of ten people, um, you know, how many don't actually get pulled on full time. Maybe ten to fifteen percent of the time, and a lot of it is because that person really is not a fit or something else comes up and the person leaves. So just like they can, you know, terminate your performance and any company can terminate your performance, you also have the flexibility of something comes up on the permanent side that you can leave as well. We just ask for the courtesy of a two week notice. Um, but you know, ultimately companies don't want to be hiring. They want to have somebody that is in the seat and functioning well. So for the most part, the role that we see, the the people that don't last in the six month contract to hires or even in the permanent roles are the ones that go in and, and just aren't cutting it. So I guess I so, just and that's why we'd help help minimize that by us being in, in constant contact with you while you're on contract as well as speaking to your manager, mm -hmm. making sure that you have what you need to be successful. As far as like flexibility goes in the companies that you have, um, do you have any that are like open to or like have remote days or are they all in office? I mean you may not know off the top of your head, but just if you it's you know. gonna be it's gonna be company specific. Um, there's not a blanket model that I can say like you know these, these types of companies do remote. For the most part, you're gonna be looking at and plan on being on site full time. Um, I do have some companies like we've got one up in downtown Salt Lake that every Thursday the entire dev team works remote. So each company is gonna be unique. They are gonna have some flexibility and things like if you have a doctor's appointment or something urgent comes up. So they're going to allow for stuff like that, but if it's something that's like reoccurring every single week, they're not going to they're not going to do that. Okay, so I guess I have another question. Based off of what you can see off my resume, my experience, what kind of compensation would you be looking at trying to place me towards? Based off of your resume, we're going to be targeting, and you kind of already mentioned it already, anywhere from like eighty to ninety-five k. That's what I'm seeing right now for someone with about three years of solid professional experience. Um, outside of that, it would really just be you know company specific, but just in general, it's probably a pretty good target range where you're at now, up to about 95k is what I'm seeing. Yeah, give me give me a little bit to get there, some job descriptions for you to send over, and um, once I get those out, we'll talk about it, see which ones look good, and move forward from there. All right, what does the What's the estimated time from interview to placement usually? I know company specific, um, but you're you're probably yeah, and then part of that's going to depend on the client. I've got some that'll interview next day and make a decision. Um, each of those, like we're, we're running with some managers that are already taking holiday pay them off, so it's going to be you know on a case by case basis. But I would say in general, you're probably about a week or so in the interview process. So most clients will do a two-step, like a phone interview and then an in-person interview. Um, and that usually takes about a week. And then from there, if you need to give notice where you're at, you know, you're looking for two weeks before you start. So I'd say it's about two to three weeks overall. All right. Some, so, are, some are certainly quicker than that. Some are right on that time schedule. Right. Um, just depends on how urgent of a need it is for the client. Right. I know you guys have, like, direct contact with the hiring manager usually, so it's a lot quicker we don't have to go through hr you just place it right on the desk of the hiring manager and so it's like here you go we've yep. already talked to them we vetted them so i was just curious what that timeline looked like okay perfect i'll get some things put together and send you away all right thanks so much man you bet thanks josh yep have a good one Bye. bye all right so that guy was actually pretty he was pretty chill and sounds like he's has some good intentions the thing with these types of recruiters are what I've talked about previously. You'll be working for the recruiter. They'll be charging the company $100 an hour and they'll be paying you probably 
$70 an hour, right? So they're just scraping off the top. And you heard him, it's based off 1,040 hours of work that the client has to pay for to the re recruiting agency in order for them to satisfy their debt with the, with the recruiter, basically. So 1,040 hours priced at whatever salary I say, and they can manage to negotiate plus 10, 20%. And that's what the company has to pay in order to satisfy their debt contractor. That's where you are. You're just this little pawn that's just like, hey, I'm here, I have a job, and they're kind of working around you. But that's the job, that's how they put food on the table. That's just how it goes. You know, this guy, when I say I want 120, one recruiter might be like, okay, yeah, perfect. I, I, I definitely think we can get you that. And then someone's gonna, like this guy, he's gonna be like, yeah, no, I think that's probably in about the right range. He's not gonna lie, you know, just to do that, so. So that's another interview, another kind of recruiter interview, just to work with people, just to get your foot in the door, ask those questions. You know, what's the chance of me not being hired? What's the, you know, what's the timeline look like to where I could get hired? And you just have to ask those sorts of questions. You might not be thinking about them, but hopefully now that you've seen this video, you've been thinking about them. And if it's been helpful, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe. Uh, I'm 15, I guess my voice is still, I'm almost 30, my voice still squeaks. Hit that subscribe and you know, check out my website. I have some resumes and cover letters there. They support the channel. Shout out to all the patrons that support the channel. We have a Discord. Come there, shoot me a link. Be sure to follow me on all the social medias. I got Instagram, I got LinkedIn, I got Facebook. I got all those places. I'm always, I'm everywhere. We're building the empire. So, see you guys in the next video.